Hey, what's up everybody? Here, I'm uh, Andrew here, and this is my first tutorial, so it's just a little quick look into my editing workflow. And I basically can't go through everything, but I'll go bits and pieces and help the new guys out a little bit, I guess. Um, for yeah, so this is my car, basic car editing, I guess you would say, uh, workflow. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, normally, this is my Photoshop, you know, uh, I set it up this way. So before we begin, I'll just kind of show you what I'm doing. Here's all the actions I did. It's just all the stuff that I got throughout the years, and I just kind of kept them all. This is, um, I forgot what this was called, but it's made by Google. And I haven't really used it much, but I use it here and there, like, rarely, though. But in reality, you guys don't really need this, but I like having my actions here. Uh, and of course, it's it's almost like the default layout. You have your tools, you know, menu, whatever. Um, I like to get rid of everything else, and I like to keep my navigator here. Uh, basically, it kind of just zo helps you zoom in and out. And like, I'll show you more when we actually have a picture. Then I go to the histogram. It's like I just the tab over to see what's going on with things, and I usually keep the history here. That's pretty much it. Everything else is pretty much standard, but that's pretty much it as far as that and then I just expanded the layers and if for you guys that don't know Photoshop is based on layers so what it is it's like kind of think of like, like a cake your main image is the bottom right and then like every time you add something it's like another layer of the cake you know and but you look at it from uh, from the top down so whatever is is all the way in the top is what you see first and then it kind of trickles down until you get to the base, which should be your main image. All right, so let's get started. Um, we'll open up a photo here. I grab my photo, uh, and uh, I shot the Night Runner FRS straight from Canada. He came down here to LA, and as you can see, I have a lot of other photos. But we'll open up this camera raw file I shot from a Canon EOS 5D Mark III, and this will work with any other raw file, so don't be worried. So double click that. So the first thing will pop up is camera raw, and this is what we're going to go over in the segment. So as you can see, I kind of already did a lot of uh, adjustments to it, but I'm just going to go back to default so you guys can all kind of uh, just follow along here. All right, so this is ba this is basically how it look if you open up your uh, camera raw file. Uh, white balance is uh, basically how the color temperature of how you shot it. And for those of you guys that, you know, understand photography, you kind of know about the temperature of things. So basically, it's either really cold or really warm. So you can see cold is blue. Warm is like yellow or orangish or whatever you want to say. it. How I remember it is like the lower the number, it's blue. The higher the number, it's like you're reaching for the sun. So that's why it looks orange. That's like the easiest way for me to understand it. And it's probably going to help some of you guys out. Uh, there are numbers like, you know, 3300 is like tungsten lights, and you can kind of Google that at, you know, it's a certain, the, the lights that you normally have at home with the orange look to it. Uh, 55 or 56 around there is kind of like sunlight or daylight, so that's why this was shot during the day, that's why it almost looks normal, so you got to remember that, but that's all in photography, and, you know, you can kind of like look up into that, but for the most part, Shooting camera raw, it's great because you can always just change it to, like, you know, whatever you think the white balance is. And this only works in camera raw, so remember that. All right, so if you want, you can go auto and see what it does. I mean, it looks like it added some, well, it looks like it went to 7,500. Uh, looks like it's probably shade, I believe. Yeah, that's shade. So it's a good way to look at it. So you could either do shade, you could do auto, you could leave it as I shot, which is pretty damn close. Or you can do your custom, you know, 7,500 or whatever you think looks good. I mean, some people might say, oh, 56 looks good. You know, it looks a little blue, but hey, if that's your taste, you know, oh, no. Or like, oh, I want this. I want it more yellow. It's really up to you. Uh, but I prefer the shade. So 7,500 is perfect for me. And there's a lot about color temperature. So I suggest you guys read up on it if you don't know already and yeah so for right now we'll keep it at shade because it was shot in the shade behind all these buildings during sunset so that's how i go 
Uh, tints, don't really worry too much about that. I wouldn't. Because it kind of just makes everything. Right now it's a plus 10, but if you move it around, you know, it adds a tint to it, you know. So, I mean, you get a little thing. So I'm just going to leave it back at plus 10, which is a pretty good layout. Well, a good starting point. Okay, so exposure basically is like, you know, how bright and how dark your your photo is. So I, I would say that it's kind of like the mood of it. It doesn't really affect, I mean, it affects a lot, but it doesn't really do anything. So besides affect the mood of it. So if you're like kind of like a darker tone, there it is, you know, if you're a lighter tone, it's like, oh, happier, you're like that. So I think exposure was pretty dead on this photo. I'll leave that alone. Uh, some people might have to bring it up if you're shot to the left or some people have to bring it down if you shot to the right all right and okay so that's to me right now zero is fine uh, and from there i really actually i jumped to the whites into the blacks this is what happens you kind of want your white point and then you want your black point and you're like well, what the hell are you talking about uh because yeah it's kind of like putting kind of setting your boundaries already so right now you got to find a good white point like to make your white this is white you know so it's like you can go all the way but sometimes you know you can like what i do is i aim for the histogram to i try to flatten it so it's not too crazy so for me i would like go right a little till it starts dipping down you know i mean you can go down a little bit like that but i believe you know you just gotta find the happy medium and you'll be all right Okay, so the, for the blacks, it's almost the same thing. You just go, and then you can, like, drop it down some more, and you see how it goes down, like, right when it goes down. That's how I go. And you can also fine-tune it by holding Alt and going around. Most people like to do it where they barely see something, or barely see black, and then they barely see white. But for me, I kind of like it, like, right when I drop the histogram down because that's just the way I shoot. And, I mean, look at the image now. It's pretty good. It might be a little bit too much. And the black must, might be a little too crushed, so I'm going to bring it up just a bit. And then from there, you can mess with the contrast. Okay, so the contrast, you can add some more. You know, sometimes it's too much. I'm going to go back. You know, it's up to you. So what I would like to do is, like, I kind of want to add just a little bit. You know, just a tad. So 6 would be good. I, I would never pass maybe 12 is probably the most. So even that, I think it's too much. Six to me, it's good because you can always add it later on in Photoshop. But right now, we're just talking about camera raw. And that's a pretty good setup point for me is not to go overboard with this because you can do it later in Photoshop. Because once you do it here, you're kind of stuck with it. All right. One of the biggest things to me is the highlights. Okay. So check it out. This photo alone. You see this right here? It's like super bright. And it's kind of like a high. It's, it's a highlight. You know, you even have some right here. So it's a little too much to me. Like you so said, if you close your eyes and then you open them, your your eyes are like it, the first thing they go to is like the brightest part. So here it is, and you don't want, you don't really want them to go there. You kind of want for this picture. I kind of want the whole thing, which they'll eventually look at. But you know, it's like kind of unappealing to like look at that. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bring it down just a tad. You know, bring back some of those details. You see, you can see the affection. So if I go all the way right, then you go all the way left. All the way left is seems pretty good, but it's you still want a little bit back so let's bring some of that highlights back so it kind of has like an effect that it is sunset you know so like right i don't know maybe i think a 50 50 looks pretty good all right and shadows you can affect it too but i think leaving it at zero is totally fine so all right we'll leave that at that okay the next important thing is clarity all right so, depending what you shoot, uh, you can. Ch this is some type of. Uh, this is actually like a whole story behind the clarity thing, but I'm not even gonna go through that. We're just gonna go through this really quick, and basically, you see, a lot of amateur photographers or like a lot of people that you see pictures on the web that are just kind of like, okay, it looks cool, but it's kind of like honky. It's because people always shoot the clarity up like this. I'm pretty sure you guys go look around. You see photos that look like this, you know, like and what's worse is if it's on people like on cars. It looks OK. It looks actually pretty good, but uh, it's kind of weird and it just seems very amateurish. So I wouldn't do it that much. Uh, like I said, for people, if it was if this was a person, I would actually bring it down because 
you don't want to see if you do bump the clarity up you'll see every detail it means you'll see like every pore every blemish everything will just be like horrible especially for like females so for that you'd bring it back down like this soften them up soften up their face soften up their skin and it'll look really good but we're working on cars so what we're going to do is like we i tend to just go you know add a little bit not too much not like up here or anything i would go like maybe the most would be 15 if that like right now i think 12 looks good to me and i think that's pretty good and i think this is a pretty good starting off point and then you have vibrance and saturation you know vibrance is kind of like a smart saturation where it's a little bit you know a little bit smarter than just adding saturation which is like way overboard so to me it depends on what you want but i think zero is good because you can always add this in photoshop later but if you're only working with camera raw, why not? You know, add a little bit more, and then you can see this come out. But you gotta remember, it'll you always bring uh, colors that you would not want to. Like, uh, for example, you might see more of the screen. You know, it's not controlled. This is just a general global effect. So, I mean, I guess your best bet is just to keep it zero and just add it later on Photoshop. All right. So, moving on next tab i wouldn't really mess with this because you can do this in photoshop so i wouldn't worry about it too much and like i said this is all just basic stuff not nothing too crazy nothing it's not even advanced it's just the getting out of the, like a uh, camera raw into photoshop but so yeah don't mess with this all right so on default usually i guess it's at 25 let's bring this down actually the default looks similar to this uh, sharpening, you don't have to add it uh, right now, but 25 looks okay. I mean, it's not killer. It's not doing anything to you right now. It's not overly sharp, but I think it's a pretty good happy medium. Most people like to put zero, but I think 25 is fine. I wouldn't really mess with this unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, this is more advanced, but and if you really want to fine-tune your image, uh, go ahead. But I would just leave that right now. A big one for me is this noise reduction. So, if you don't have much light, you'll have a lot of green or noise, right? So, for example, we'll, we'll go deep in here. And I find some noise. Every shot has noise. All right, so check it out. This wheel around here, there's, there's like all these weird little grain looking things. Sometimes you don't like that. So what you do, this luminance, actually, you bring it up. If you bring it all the way, you see how it, it smooths everything out. But that's a little bit too smooth because it went too far. So bring it back down to like a pretty good medium. Uh, but this shot, this image was pretty good. So just maybe at 20, maybe, maybe even 25. All right. That's pretty good. Cause you got to remember if you move this, it affects the entire image. So if you zoom back, all uh, like it'll affect like over here over here you know it'll try to smooth this out so you got to remember it's a whole global thing but you know so just again find a happy medium and then you'll be good like i believe 25 is good for this image and you know like every image will be different and like i said like like the other places these other ones will be more fine tuning everything else and this is just all the basic stuff and this is pretty good already so 25 seems pretty good all right, so the next tab over, basically, you have all these other ones, but I just focus on saturation. So saturation, like, this should all be zero. I'll put it back to default. So this is your image. And then, like, you decide, hmm, there's a little bit too much yellow or a little bit too much uh, orange or whatever. You're like, oh, I'll just bring it down. Or, for example, these wheels, you don't want the blue. It's too much. So you just bring it down. See how it goes away. You can even make it, like, almost normal te 37 sls it's pretty cool right but yeah you can even bring on that the light say you don't want this red it'll bring this one to remember it's in a it's a global effect so you see how that went down the light not so much but you kind of get the idea uh to me in this image let's reset everything i think it's a little bit too yellow so I'll bring it down a little bit like that and with yellow and it's also orange, and I think it's a little bit too orange. So I'll bring that down a little bit too. Not too much, just subtle. And then, like I said, every image is different. And the wheels, I kind of like that blue, but there is a little blue 
reflecting from the sky. Excuse me. Wow. So I'm going to uh, bring that down just a tad. Just a tad. Because you don't want to lose the blue on the wheels. So I think that's good right there. So to me, it's looking really good. Uh, I don't know if you see this too, but there's like on the headlights. If you zoom all the way in. There's kind of, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's like kind of like a purple haze to it. It's called chromatic aberration. It's kind of like it happens with the lens. It basically shows all these like, in a nutshell, it's like this purple hue or like purple lines that go around. Like, it's just because of the lens. And usually if you have a prime lens, if you shoot wide open, you'll see it more and more. So you can bring it down here or you can bring it down in another tab, but... We'll go back to here, and you can actually bring it down just like a little purple. Just bring it down just a tad, you know? You might not see much of a difference, but, you know, after a while, you'll actually get used to it. So you might want to get rid of it. So, yeah, we'll just move on, and I'll kind of show you more into that. So this right here is split toning. I wouldn't mess with this because all this stuff you can do in Photoshop. And all we're doing in Camera Raw is trying to get, like, the best image, best base image possible. All right, so I wouldn't mess around with this too much. Uh, so this is the chromatic aberration, like I was talking before. You like you basically click this, and then it'll hunt for the purples, and get rid of it. So this was a pretty good. It was already kind of set, but you, you'll kind of get the idea. Like it's kind of gone. And like I said, every image is different. Uh, you might have more, you might have less, you might not even have any. So this is pretty good. And for this one, I will just concentrate on this slider here. Everything else just kind of leave alone unless you have like some green chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration. All right. So we'll leave that alone. And all these are more advanced and just kind of stick with it. Uh, then, yeah, I mean, the, these other tabs I wouldn't really actually worry about. You can go through them if you want, but we're pretty much done. And I'm not even going to go, go over any of this stuff, so don't even worry. So, yeah, I mean, here's our image. Oh, yeah, and you still have, like, tools and other stuff here. But, like I said, this is just basics, basic startup. And right now the image looks pretty, pretty good. <laughs> and we haven't even started editing it, but... Like, when you get in the habit, things will go faster, and you'll breeze through this like nothing. Um, so, yeah. After that, you just open the image. Photoshop's reading the camera raw format. And then you're ready to edit. And so, that's it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial for camera raw i mean there's billions of them out there but this is kind of like how i do things how project definition does things and um yeah and just basically i'm using photoshop and camera raw and 5d mark 3 raw files uh if you have a similar setup or any other raws this should be very similar so yeah if you guys like it uh hit the like button uh hit follow me subscribe um, yeah, I, we also set up a Patreon. Uh, the link will be found in the description below if you guys want to help support me and uh, me and Project Definition and all of our endeavors into this feature of um, getting more automotive content to you guys. Um, me and my buddy Will, Will Nestle, he's like uh, another photographer and DP, fellow DP, and we're both working at, you know, trying to do everything we can and uh, any support will be great so i hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you guys next time peace